Hi. In this session, I am going to talk about aeration and foaming. Aeration is not really a media requirement for the microorganism. We cannot add uh, aeration into a media component, but it is needed continuously during the fermentation. So most of the fermentations are being aerobic. We need to supply uh, oxygen uh, throughout the fermentation. And the requirement of oxygen will vary. In the beginning, maybe it will need oxygen only, only in a small quantities. After once it is grown, it is in a low phase, it may need in high quantities. Uh, in the stationary phase, it may not it require uh, oxygen only in low quantities. So it also affects the uh, product formation. Sometimes aeration is not good for the product formation. Sometimes it is negatively affecting. Sometimes it is positively affect the uh, product formation. So we need the continuous supply of oxygen for the microorganism in case of aerobic organisms and the level of aeration need to be controlled so that we will get a good yield. Foaming is a uh, is caused due to the aeration. That's a negative effect of aeration. So in the session, I will be talking about aeration and how foaming happens. Aeration, uh, like it is to maintain the dissolved oxygen levels in the medium. In the beginning, the medium will have the enough dissolved oxygen. But as the microorganism is growing, it will consume all the oxygen from the medium. So it will amount of dissolved oxygen will reduce. So the microbial growth will be uh, reduced. Product formation will be reduced. So that's not good. So aeration is to assure uh, enough amount of dissolved oxygen in the medium. Aeration is also used to control growth rate and metabolic production. So uh, in the medium, we cannot control the uh, amount of carbon source or nitrogen source or other requirements. Sometimes we do, but in most of cases, it is very, very difficult to control. But the microbial growth can be easily controlled by controlling the aeration. The aerobic bacteria, the rate of growth is directly proportional to the metabolism. For the proper metabolism, it needs air or oxygen. So we, when we control aeration, it will affect the dissolved oxygen rate. So the microbial growth rate is some way uh, controlled by this uh, aeration. So we can actually control to an extent, but in some cases, if the microorganism is facultatively anaerobic mi microorganism, it will switch the metabolism from the aerobic to anaerobic. In those cases, it doesn't work the way we expect it. And uh, the aeration is also essential for the metabolite production, especially for the primary metabolites. Uh, it needs constant supply of air, or sometimes it uh, doesn't need air. If you are looking for the fermentation, like acetic acid or uh, for alcohol in those cases the fermentation anaerobic fermentation happens when aeration is not present so it's totally depending on the type of fermentation for aeration either we can use the atmospheric air which is contain about 21 percentage of oxygen or we can use pure oxygen maybe 90 percent or 100 percent of oxygen for aeration so if you are using atmospheric air uh, it is cheap very easy to obtain what we need to do is to filter it, uh, to sterilize it and use. In case of pure oxygen, we may need to purchase it from somewhere. So pure oxygen used to be expensive, but we need only it in small quantities. Then uh, but when we are using pure oxygen, the dissolved oxygen will level will rise very sharply. But if we are using atmospheric oxygen, we need to have more air to get oxygen saturation. Uh, oxygen requirements vary depending on the carbon source. Uh, we know that some of the carbon sources are simple sugars like monosaccharides or disaccharides, uh, which is very easy to metabolize. Uh, if you are using glucose as a uh, carbon source, microorganisms can easily uh, take up the glucose from the medium and it can easily metabolize the glucose. So what happens is like that the demand for the oxygen will increase. The microorganism is getting more of glucose, so it is metabolizing very fastly. So the requirement of the oxygen will also increase very quickly. So, uh, but if you are using uh, starch as a carbon source, uh, microorganism used to produce an enzyme, extracellular enzyme to degrade starch to get glucose. So the availability of glucose to the microorganism is low. So the requirement of the oxygen is not that much. So carbon source also uh, determine oxygen requirement of the microorganism. If you are using simple sugars, the requirement is high. If you are using complex sugars, requirement is low. 
uh, for most fermentation uh, the air or oxygen is supply is sterilized using filtration so filters are used to sterilize so we are supplying uh, sterile air fast metabolism as i told before uh, the specific oxygen uptake is high especially when we are using simple sugars or the simple nitrogen source microorganism will metabolize it very quickly and the demand for oxygen will also increase uh, example is glucose for penicillium chrysogenum if you are providing glucose as a carbon source for the penicillium chrysogenum oxygen demand is so high and it microorgan the organism won't produce penicillin because it is still in the uh, log phase uh, in order to produce penicillin it should go to the uh, stationary phase uh, this fast metabolism can be avoided either by using fed batch process we are adding oxy glucose step by step or using a complex carbohydrate instead of the simple sugars so in different ways we can control fast metabolism another concept is rheology rheology is the flow of matter uh, in the liquid state so how it is flowing it is basically affected by the viscosity the flow of uh, matter in liquid state will affected by the viscosity if it is a high viscous medium the uh, flow will be in one way or if you are less viscous medium the flow is another way so that's what the rheology say uh, we are not jumping into the details of the rheology but the uh, thing is that the aeration is depending on the rheology rheological characteristics of the medium affect the uh, oxygen aeration of the medium if you are providing aeration to a high viscous medium uh, the dissolved oxygen amount will vary so viscosity also play a role uh, in dissolved oxygen even if you are providing same amount of uh, oxygen aeration to different medium with a different viscosity the dissolved oxygen what that's what the microorganism need uh, will vary uh, another thing is that the viscosity or the rheology of medium uh, is depending on the composition of the medium so think in this way when we are beginning the fermentation it may have the complex sugars like or starch or glycogen or cellulose something like that it has the complex sugars so uh, the medium might be little bit viscous or very viscous so once the microorganism starts to grow what they do they will degrade the starch into glucose or the uh, other complex carbohydrate into simple carbohydrates so the viscous the amount of starch is reducing if the amount of starch is reducing what happens the viscosity will change so during the time of fermentation there is a change in viscosity uh, so the, there is change in the rheology of the medium so there is a change in the amount of dissolved oxygen so we we cannot supply the oxygen at the same level throughout the fermentation the requirement by the bacteria will change uh, the rheological characters will change the amount of dissolved oxygen which can be present in the media will change so there are so many factors which affecting the final dissolved oxygen concentration so there should be a system to control the amount of aeration through the medium throughout the fermentation uh, we used to put, put some of the sensors for the oxygen in the fermenter so that we can monitor how much uh, oxygen is there in the medium continuously if the oxygen uh, dissolved oxygen level fall below the required level we can actually increase the aeration or if it is above we can reduce the aeration so we can do such things depending on the aeration levels so this figure show two different mediums uh, probably under aeration uh, you can actually see the difference here the in the both of the fermenters the media at in the same level i think these are the same fermenter uh, which is taken images at different time anyway in this case you can see the media level here but nothing about that but here you can the form uh, like it is forming is uh, here in this media uh, so the working level is increased here is we don't have any form one of the side effect of aeration is forming we are actually providing aeration the air bubbles releasing air bubbles uh, down in the fermenter so what happens this air bubble may cause forming in the fermenter which is not good so the forming is largely due to the media proteins the media would, will definitely have some type of proteins in most cases uh, so it may be come from the nitrogen source or as a component in the carbon source or somewhere there might be some proteins this protein cause uh, forming the forming is form is produced by in a multi step process uh, first thing happening is like uh, in a fermenter we have media 
and the air and the we call the media as broth as we say most of the cases there is a interface between air and the broth the proteins which is present in the interface interacting with the air and uh, broth so this protein will get denatured naturally because it is exposed to air uh, so the, because of the difference in condition it will just get denatured so whenever we are putting a protein in a liquid medium the uh, liquid uh, air interface which causes the denaturation of the protein and this denatured protein form a stable skin at the top of the uh, liquid surface so once first step the protein is denatured because as it is exposed to the uh, air and denatured proteins more and more proteins get uh, uh, get denatured and it is uh, form a film above the media you may have seen the film on top of the milk or uh, tea so we have the denatured membrane on top of the media then what happens is like we are providing aeration from uh, below the air bubbles this small air bubbles it will go and trap in this film this air bubbles will continuously like uh, come in contact with the film and it will be trapped and there will be a fo formation of the foam uh, in the minor quantities this is called the primary forming the primary forming is due to the media components the media components has proteins proteins get denatured it form a film and the it trap air bubbles so this air bubbles act as a uh, form it's called the primary primary uh, forming then what happens is like as the amount of air bubbles increases more and more proteins will get exposed to the air so if the film is forming again the film is forming and the foam level is increasing what happens is that more and more proteins and the bacteria will carry into the foam and this bacteria and the, uh, proteins which is trapped in the uh, air bubbles of the foam will expose to the environment layer and it leads to the denaturation of the protein and the autolysis of this bacteria once the bacteria get autolysed the components the components inside the cell will be released which mainly contain protein and nucleic acid which again strengthen the uh, film which add to the already existing protein film the media uh, protein film so it will tighten the uh, layer and it will add more and more forming so that's called a secondary forming so in first stage in forming what happens the media proteins which form a which got denatured and form a film and the it goes uh, initial forming when the foam is forming the bacteria and the and uh, the proteins in the media again trapped in the air bubbles the foam which leads to the autolysis of the bacteria and denatured of the protein autolysis leads to the release of uh, intracellular components into the foam which again denatured and form a more stable film which again trap more and more air bubbles leads to the more and more forming so that's a cycle of events which leads to the forming and we can see here uh, this process leads to the formation of the foam so in the most of the cases there is a pattern of forming either media components are causing the forming or the microorganisms is causing the forming if only media component is causing forming what happens is like uh the media components in the beginning there will be presence of a huge foam and once the media components are used by the microorganism the amount of foam will reduce 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 and it will go to absent if the microorganism are the only one who is causing foaming the pattern is different in initial stage number of microorganism is less so there is no foam as the number of microorganism increases the foaming will increase so that way also happens that sometimes or in most of the cases media components as well as the microorganism is producing forming so in the initial we have foam which is due to the media in the final stage also we have foam which is due to the microorganism and there is so many effects for this forming forming is not really good for fermentation uh, i am listing few of the negative aspects of forming it will reduce the working volume of the medium some of the medium is carry over into the foam media is trapped in the foam so the working volume is reduced Uh, decrease the mass and heat transfer as we know the foam doesn't transfer heat very much so even if we are 
trying to control the overall temperature of the medium because of the foam the transfer may not be good mass transfer the uptake of nutrients by the microorganism may not happen in the foam because they are further apart and no mixing in the foam uh, then incorrect sensing monitoring and control in the fermenter you can actually see that several sensors are placed here in the top on the top of the fermenter for sensor for the ph for the dissolved oxygen um, for the product formation for the microbial growth so so many sensors will be placed on top of this fermenter once the foam is produced it will increase the level of media and it will interfere with the electrical circuit of this uh, sensors in some cases so that leads to the incorrect sensing monitoring and control it block air filters in the most of the fermenters have an air filter on top of the fermenter which helps to like uh, helps to remove excess air from the fermenter we, as we are when we are providing aeration it will it is adding air to the medium this air need to be go out of the fermenter for that we have air filters so if the foam is coming up it will wet the air filters which will decrease the performance of air filters it may lead to loss of aseptic conditions sometimes the foam will leak into the outside of the fermenter which may cause contamination by some microorganism may get in and contaminate the media loss of productivity if the foam is there it will cause so many complications so the overall productivity may reduce uh, microbial infection and contamination the thing is that the microorganism inside this, the fermenter can come out from the fermenter as a foam uh, so the air filters as i said before the media may come out in the form of foam uh, to outside the a fermenter which may cause contamination and infection uh, microorganisms are may released into the environment which is a serious issue when we are dealing with the genetically modified organism and the other thing is that the free board the free area in the previous uh, slide you have see this is the free board the media volume is here but we have we have uh, some free area here which is which is for the sensing and everything if foaming is there this amount of uh, like the space without the media should be high so we cannot put in this fermenter we cannot put this much amount of uh, medium we cannot only plus uh, put a half of the medium to compensate for foaming so free board uh, will be high we need to keep a good uh, volume uh, for nothing just for the foam so which will add cost to the fermenter and reduce the productivity this form can be controlled in different ways uh, which is bad form is bad so we need to control uh, depending on the cause of the forming we can control uh, forming one method is first method is to modify media components if media components are causing the forming we can actually modify the media component if the nitrogen source is one nitrogen source is causing the forming we can change the nitrogen source to another one so that the forming will be less so the media can be changed or the composition can be manipulated to avoid forming if media components are causing the forming sometimes modification of physical parameters like ph temperature aeration or agitation can also help to improve uh, uh, to reduce forming so sometimes change in ph will reduce forming or temperature uh, maybe if you are doing the fermentation it will be the higher temperature forming will be reduced aeration the type of aeration we are giving the type of sparges we are using uh, which can affect the forming agitators the mixing how we are mixing what type of impellers we are using so those things can uh, control uh, forming but the thing is that whenever you are trying to control the media components or we are trying to control the physical parameters which may affect the overall growth and the product formation of the microorganism we can actually change the ph to reduce forming but at the same time we may be losing the productivity so that's not good that's why uh, if possible we are uh, controlling the physical parameters or the media composition in most of the cases we cannot touch them media composition need to be fixed uh, we need know that the getting a perfect media is very difficult and so you know to avoid forming we may not be able to get an good alternative or physical parameters is also important for the microbial growth and product formation so what we really do is we are using either mechanical form breakers or chemical anti form agents to control form in next session i will be talking about mechanical form breakers and chemical anti forms thank you so much